The acceleration of software and hardware is in the triple digits. This is the current trend. However, there hasn't been much discussion on this. Even with massive decreases, people haven't paid attention. What do you think, everyone? When the tide comes in, it's time to row again. It's error here, making another video before bed. In the past 24 hours, I've uploaded five videos. With the global community in shock, there's a lot of information circulating and people are making various value judgments. Everyone has different views on future prospects. So I aim to share my thoughts based on technical facts in this video. I apologize for the clickbait title. Misunderstanding the global impact of China's deep sink. This is the reality of being a YouTuber. Life is a bit tough, please understand. Anyway, regarding this, I also talked about NVIDIA, or even if it's not specifically about NVIDIA, there were opinions that the AI market could expand. I received a lot of feedback on this, and I learned a lot too. People shared insights on which points to focus on. Many people involved in stocks also came, but since I run a tech channel, I do not have much to add myself. I am constantly learning from experts like Director Lee Sun Hyuk from Shin Han Investment Corporation or Dante from the Lee Hyo Seok Academy. Even though I run a tech channel, I have only been a YouTuber for a month. What do I really know? I am simply sharing my thoughts based on the little knowledge I have. I am eager to hear your insights and opinions. So, as I mentioned earlier, numerous tech gurus and CEOs have been sharing a plethora of their thoughts and insights. Let's delve into the insights shared by notable figures like the former Intel CEO and the CEO of Purple City, among others. By exploring their viewpoints and the discussions gaining traction within the community, which many find relatable, we can gain a clearer understanding of the overall scenario. I'll summarize their statements and clarify how we should interpret these perspectives. Mark Andreessen is a highly influential venture capitalist in the tech sector. Dante provided an in-depth explanation, describing the DeepSync R1 model as a pivotal moment for AI, akin to the Sputnik moment. While we often hear comparisons to the iPhone moment for AI, the term Sputnik refers to the spacecraft that the Soviet Union launched into space many decades ago. This era signaled the intense space race during the Cold War between the United States and the Soviet Union. DeepSync, fueled by American innovation, saw substantial investments from big tech firms. In reaction to these developments, China, another major contender, launched its own significant projects, marking a crucial moment in the ongoing tech competition. The insights I've gathered have been incredibly valuable. This perspective was shared from the standpoint of a venture capital investor, giving us a broad overview. Now let's delve into how professionals within the tech sector view this. First up, we have Pat Gelsinger. Pat Gelsinger mentioned that Intel's Gauss 2 and 3 GPUs are collaborating with Naver Cloud in South Korea. In the meantime, he posted a very insightful article. Wisdom is about relearning lessons we thought we already knew. It means what we knew has been shattered. Now, from a broader perspective, what does DeepSync signify? Pat Gelsinger, who has a long history with semiconductor computing and CPUs, brings to light three pivotal lessons from the history of computing as an engineer. The first lesson he mentions is that computing follows the principles of gas laws. Essentially, when costs improve dramatically, the market, it will expand even further. Do not miss this point. In the AI market, if creating AI models and services drastically improves performance while reducing costs, it mirrors the semiconductor industry. If we consider Moore's law and the continuous CPU advancements, prices stabilize or even drop. When improvements are dramatic, the market expands, so the AI market is expected to grow. Meanwhile, in the blink of an eye, according to the stock market standards, there's a lot of talk about significant declines, but if we look at the AI market, it's expected to expand more broadly in terms of AI utilization. Secondly, engineering is achieved within constraints. Honestly, as someone who runs a tech channel called Impossible Engineering, I find this quite touching. Of course, Mr. Packelsinger has faced the tough history of Intel. Even though he's been part of the journey for a long time, during his peak, he was similar to today's top tech leaders, a genuine engineer. Now, Chinese engineers, working with limited resources, particularly NVIDIA's benchmarks, had to innovate within these constraints. They delved deeply into algorithms, AI models, and AI architecture. And in doing so, they discovered highly creative solutions. This particular aspect can be understood as a form of commendation for the highly innovative solutions that tend to emerge when optimizing specific components and solving problems within the constraints of limited resources. And finally, we see the triumph of open source. This is intriguing. DeepSync is becoming more passive over time. OpenAI, which was initially founded with an open approach, is now completely closed off AI. Conversely, Google still shares some of their advancements. Even Microsoft supports open source initiatives like El Llama. However, when it comes to frontier models, well, companies like Entropic have maintained a closed approach. However, they announced their aim to contribute to redefining foundational model research within an open ecosystem, expressing thanks to the DeepSync team. Patrick Singer, a renowned figure in the computing world, shared these insights. This suggests that the AI market may not be on the decline, but could instead become a catalyst for the industry. We should consider the potential that this could occur. It's not a guarantee, but it's an idea worth contemplating. Next, this person is from Perplexity, which is an AI search engine. He is the person who created the concept of the answer engine. To put it nicely, here's what he said. Aravind Srinivas, CEO of Perplexity, explained that DeepSync R1 is an AI model. 
He described how the AI model functions, mentioning it operates on a matrix structure, inputting numbers to generate output sequences. DeepSync is ultimately a mobile app. You can interact with this AI model through a chat interface. They released it as open source. They are essentially saying that anyone can download and use all the matrix data. Since it is open source, you can run it on your own server, which means you can operate it locally, just like an on-device AI. This is something I talked about in my previous video. If you run the server in the US, the data will not be transmitted to China. For those worried about privacy, I made that video to explain that using the DeepSync website or app could result in your data being stored on Chinese servers. However, this might not be a significant concern. Companies like Google and many other AI and IT services already handle a lot of personal data. You need to consent to keep using and updating these apps. However, China has had various issues over time, which makes us concerned. You can host it directly in the US, ensuring no data gets transferred to China. This setup supports full local computation, eliminating the need for external servers. Plus, being open source, it allows for the integration of completely different models, showcasing its various advantages. As an AI service startup, it is attracting significant attention. Perplexity included this in their open source release, right? Of course, they included perplexity in their service because they incorporated DeepSync. So there's also a promotional aspect to it. However, it seems they see it as a way to mitigate risks. Now, this is Mark Benioff, the CEO of Salesforce. He has achieved the number one spot on the App Store. It even beat ChatGPT. NVIDIA's supercomputer doesn't need $100 million. DeepSync claims this to be true, but the topic has sparked a lot of controversy, especially since Trump took office. What this person wants to emphasize is that ultimately, even at Salesforce, data is crucial in AI. They argue that true value lies in managing this data well. Essentially, creating a good AI model depends on data, including metadata, which underscores the importance of data once again. Ultimately, data plays a crucial role in the development of a core model like DeepSync, and we must consider how to utilize it and unlock its potential. And even Andrew Eng, one of the AI Big Four, talks about the stock market. There was a significant drop in the market, dubbed Deep Sync Black Monday, but ultimately this is a very positive signal for those building AI service applications. What does this mean? It means that the start of AI will gradually expand. This could be seen as an intensifying race to develop usable AI technologies. Feel free to critique and share your knowledge with me anytime, as I am always open to learning and improving. Now there's this person named Jinpan, who is an engineer at NVIDIA and has a huge following. He often shares a lot of technical knowledge with his audience, and he recently made an interesting comment that seemed a bit casual, perhaps because he's from NVIDIA. He said, machines will train other machines, so never oppose scaling. We'll keep scaling. What does this mean? Let's see one more thing. What this person is saying is RL. This means reinforcement learning. People who think reinforcement learning uses less computing power do not understand it. What do I mean? Supervised fine-tuning is the traditional method. It's a supervised learning method. Human-generated data is used for training. This includes data from newspapers, books, and web data. It's the traditional approach of teaching. However, with reinforcement learning, machines generate their own data and then learn from it. Isn't this fascinating? The reason many people think NVIDIA is in trouble is that low-cost alternatives have become powerful enough to handle these tasks efficiently, which could mean trouble for NVIDIA. Who could possibly think that reinforcement learning wouldn't be able to handle computing tasks effectively? Machines now need to generate and learn from their own data. In the past, machines would learn from human-generated data, but the current necessity is for machines to create their own data sets. This is a crucial point I've emphasized before. If you examine the DeepSync paper, especially beyond the R1.0 version, you'll notice this aspect is strongly highlighted. Although reinforcement learning alone can yield fairly decent results, it does encounter some limitations. To overcome these, they generated an initial set of 800,000 datasets, which significantly enhanced the performance of ChatGPT-01. It's essential to employ a frontier model, such as OpenAI-01, for creating these initial datasets. To achieve sufficiently good performance, you need to train with such synthetic data. In other words, even with reinforcement learning, you need data from a very sophisticated supervised learning model like Frontier. This highlights the importance of machine-generated data, for instance, with DeepSync R1, which is based on the DeepSync V3 model released a month ago. Its performance is excellent. Using it, we need to leverage these insights. Reflecting on what Jinpan recently said, machines will train other machines. Don't oppose scaling everyone. What do you think? According to the principle of scaling, the continuous expansion and massive investments by big tech companies are now seen as flawed, leading to a decline in their market valuations. However, as machines still need to generate data, ongoing growth remains crucial. Essentially, even if DeepSync performs exceptionally well, the need for expansion will continue. To conclude, while I am not entirely sure who this person is, I find the content incredibly intriguing. The reason I am sharing this with you is because it has garnered significant viewership and has been widely shared. It offers an excellent summary of the current situation and aligns with my own thoughts, providing valuable insights that I believe you will appreciate. So, I made a few notes while reading the DeepSync paper. Here's the main point. Can DeepSync's cost reduction lower computing power demand? I wondered if models like DeepSync would reduce the need for NVIDIA GPUs or AI chips. To sum it up, it seems that's not the case. If you look at this graph, the cost per token at the GPT-4 level is down over a year. In just six months, costs dropped 100 to 1,000 times. This graph from January 2025 shows the cost per million tokens. 
the horizontal axis is logarithmic. When models like GPT were first introduced, they initially demonstrated a certain level of performance, but then their capabilities started to decline quite significantly over time. These figures are around 30 or 40. When it got here, it was still about the same. Then it becomes one tenth, one hundredth, and almost one thousandth. Looking at this reduction trend, the benchmark of five units shrinks significantly. It's not a big deal, just something that happened. So there's no need to worry. The software algorithm acceleration is threefold, and the hardware acceleration is also threefold. This is the current trend, but it hasn't been widely discussed. Despite significant drops by factors of 1,000 and 100, it didn't catch much attention. The emergence of this technology from China and its open source release are pivotal. This trend is an important indicator, so take a look and share your thoughts. The DeepSync R1 paper also mentions this. To advance the frontier, it specifies the need for larger scale reinforcement learning and a more robust foundational model. This ties back to my earlier point. As AI scales up, the demand for a more powerful base model becomes apparent. And larger scale reinforcement learning requires the creation of a substantial data set and initial training, which necessitates a robust large model. Therefore, the DeepSync R1 model introduces a new training method that doesn't merely demand more GPU investments, but offers an innovative foldable approach to continuously advance and refine scaling laws. You can understand this, right? This is also mentioned in the BRAP. Previously it was in this form, but there was an improvement to lift it up. Because no matter how much you increase the GPUs, it was still lagging, right? However, with DeepSync R1, a novel method has been introduced enabling continuous extension. The critical question is whether DeepSync's approach will adhere to the scaling law and prolong its lifespan. The discussion revolves around whether performance will keep improving with increased scale. Even with this method, the scaling law's success has not reached its limit, prompting massive investments. The critical aspect isn't merely that DeepSync R1 uses just a tenth of the power. It's that it manages to deliver the same computational output. The pivotal question is whether the scaling laws still apply when employing the Deep sync method. To illustrate, think about the evolution from flip chip BGAS to interposers, and ultimately to glass substrates. Just as the entire landscape transforms with the introduction of new architectures such as AMD's Zen 3, Zen 4, and Zen 5, or NVIDIA's Ampere, Hopper, and the Black architectures, or the Snapdragon 8, Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 3, and the Snapdragon X series, we need to recognize these as fundamental structural shifts within the architectural landscape. So, what are your thoughts so far? It seems to align with the extension of what I initially mentioned, doesn't it? There are many opinions out there. Some groups think this way, but we cannot predict the future. As a tech YouTuber, my words are not always right. People have different thoughts. Since I have some technical understanding, I try to explain things easily and share my views. We do not know how this big trend will change, but looking at past actions and opinions on this site, by listening to their stories, I was able to see how these interpretations come about.